Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell Inspiron 14 series. The exact model is a Dell Inspiron 3437. That information can be found on the bottom sticker. And in this video, I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open up your laptop, how you can service, clean and maintain, do a maintenance on your laptop. This is not a benchmark or comparison between thermal paste, anything like that. I always get a, a comments on that. This is just a regular maintenance for your laptop. Every year, year and a half, depending how often you use and the condition for the room, it does get clogged up with the dust, hair, and the thermal paste will dry out eventually. So this is good if to bring the temperatures down so the CPU can overboost itself and work better. All right. And by doing a repaste cleaning, you're not changing anything in the system. It's all pretty much plug and play and just do a service and turn it back on and you'll be left wherever you were before. All right. So first thing first, you want to power off. You want to flip it upside down. You want to remove the battery just by pulling these two latches away and the battery will come out. I lost the battery for this one. All right, I'm gonna go over the tools. I'll be using every tool that I use. It will be linked in the video description in case you wanna purchase yours. Tool number one and the most important one is a good screwdriver set. Don't use those cheap screwdriver sets. You can damage the screw heads for your laptop. All right, so I'll be using a fixed screwdriver set. I purchased this one, the basic set at least. Um, you're gonna use a Phillips number one. And second important one is a workshop towel. One or two sheets of the workshop towel, it's very important to have. I do not recommend a microfiber towels. The reason is for the next one is for an alcohol. Isopropolic or isopropolic, 99% or 98% at least. The reason for the workshop towel is as soon as you put an alcohol on top, you wanna to try to clean the motherboard, the component, the CPU. This towel will get ripped and will not damage the components on the board. So that's why I always recommend this one. Microfiber towels are good, but not for electronics because you, it can get tangled on the capacitors and it can damage them. So use this one. You can use a paper towel, but it's not that recommended. It, uh, it does, it's just not. All right. After that, you need a good thermal paste. You can go overboard, overkill with thermal grizzly extreme or you can just simply go with an Arctic MX4 or MX6. MX6 are really good too. Uh, I only have MX4 right now. All right, and you need an opening tool. If you purchase the pro set of the iFixit, they will give you an opening tool. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. Uh, metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. All right. And you need a tooth toothbrush. New or used toothbrush to clean the dust fan. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get it started. First thing first, power off, remove the battery. We're gonna remove a few things. We're gonna remove the cover for the servicing at the bottom, the tiny screw. Remove that one. You wanna put the opening tool on the cover. You wanna bring it up a little bit, just a little bit, and then slide it towards yourself. You have to slide it, all right? Then you will release it. I'll put this one here beside its own screw. Next, we want to remove, there's only two different screws in here, this one and the one in the middle. These two screws are a little tiny, a little longer, because these are for the keyboard. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the screws. Whatever screw you see, they're all the same size and height, including the one right in here in the middle. So let's go ahead and remove it. Don't forget the one under the battery. There's one single one right under the battery, right here. All right, now that I removed all the screws from the bottom cover, so there should be three, six, seven, eight of them. We're gonna put them to one side. We are gonna remove the hard drive by removing one screw at the back bottom. It's a tiny screw. And we're gonna grab this flip thing here and we're gonna slide it towards the left and towards the right remove the hard drive we are going to grab a pair of tweezers we are going to remove the wi-fi cable just bring them off for just like that be gentle with them and we're going to untangle them like that 
all right. We are going to remove the DVD drive just by sliding it back because we already removed the screw for it. We are going to flip the laptop over and we are going to remove the keyboard. To remove the keyboard, what you want to do, you want to grab the opening tool, you want to stick between the top row and just there's a tiny latches in there. You can see between the delete and volume mute, F8, F4 and escape F1. So you want to stick it there and you want to just twist it. Once you did the top row, grab it from the middle, bring it up in 45 degree angle, bring it towards the screen so you can release these latches under the palm rest. Once you're in here, put your fingernail at the bottom here and you want to lift up this latch and slide 45 degree angle the flex cable. Now down here we're going to remove lift up this latch for power on switch and we are going to slide out this flex cable. We're going to do the same thing here, lift up this one for the trackpad and then close the latch so you don't damage it. Sorry. Right. We're going to remove four screws, one, two, three, four. These are the same screws as at the bottom cover. All right, once we remove those, what you want to do, you want to just lift up the top cover, just like that, put the opening tool between the palm rest and the bottom cover, and just pretty much rotate it like this, and do the front end. Just sticking about one or two millimeter of the guitar pick, not the whole thing. Go all the way to the back corner. Once you have those ones in, just grab it. You want to bring it up straight and the back one is going to make a big click. Those are the clips at the back, which where you can't reach. But once you lift up a little bit, they will snap out. They don't break. Now here's your palm rest. Now the fun part, the motherboard. First, we're going to remove the latch for the expansion USB. And we're going to bring it up. You can put a little bit of alcohol. Where is my alcohol? This flex cable, so it can get on the bottom, so it blends the adhesive, so you can lift it up. So there's a tiny screen there. You want to unplug the speaker cables, just like that. You can use your fingernail, just pull it back. You want to lift up the power jack. The power jack is right here. Just bring it upward straight. Make sure the cable how it goes. Now you can pull it out gently, just like that, it's straight out. Now we're going to remove the flex cable for the LCD display. Lift up this flip thing, bring it up. Lift, open up the latch right here. Use your finger now. It's better. Now you want to put it underneath and you want to bring it up and gently peel it off. Be gentle with it. There's a strong adhesive to it. Put it to one side. All right, now we're going to remove the screw right under the flex cable in the corner, only one, and that's it. There's no more screws. You want to lift it up and in 45 degree angle, bring it towards yourself. The screen is heavy, it's going to go back. All right, so let me close the so you can work on this one. So here we have the heat sink and the motherboard. So what you want to do first is to disconnect the fan. Just put the curve tweezers on the side and slide them backward just like that. So you don't yank on the cables. So always make sure that it's like that. You want to slide it out like that. Remove three screws on the X clamp on the heat sink. The screws have a little C-lock that will prevent the screw coming out entirely. So if you want, you just have to loosen it up and grab it from the corners. The thermal paste, it is very dried out. And there is the whole dry thermal paste. This is very dry thermal paste. 
right? If you want to clean up the fan system inside there, you can remove one, two, three screws, and the fan will come apart, and you can clean in between them. You can remove this gaffer tape. You don't need it, but the tape on the top will do the job. So you can actually remove one, two, three screws with a bit different bit. So let me. Sometimes they do get clogged up horribly inside there. So you don't realize, you see the oh, it looks clean, but it will be really horrible in there. So you might want to remove the fan, lift up the fan, and clean up the air vent right in here. Okay, sometimes they do get really, really uh, clogged up. Once you clean up, put it back in. Put the three tiny screws on top. Don't tighten up too much, otherwise you're going to damage the plastic. Just when you feel like it, okay, it's firm, and let it go. Now we're going to clean up this thermal paste. First, have a little bit of this corner, and soak the towel right on it. And we are going to just gently rub over until we remove every bit of it. The thermal paste on the board, don't worry about it, just lift it up. Use a dry part to clean it up. And there we have nice shiny CPU die. Put your fingers at the back of the heatsink, you, so you have a support. And then you put an alcohol and clean up the thermal paste. All right, once we clean up the thermal paste, we're gonna apply the new. There's a two crystal die. People are saying, why there's a two crystal die? This is the main one is this one is a CPU die. The second one is called a PCH chip. A PCH chip uh, in the different brands, different models, they are they will located in a different place on the board. And now they brought it to the same die, so it's closer communication, and they use only one heat sink for both. So that's the reason for the two dies. So we're gonna apply one tiny line on the main one, on the PCH chip, one tiny drop. And you wanna bring the X clamp, heat sink, I mean, and put it right on top and put the screws. The screws, the, it doesn't matter which order you start with, it's a triangle, so cross the screw them, it essentially becomes the same, it will spread the thermal paste evenly. Put your hand at the back and tighten it up nicely. And don't forget to plug in the fan cable and push it all the way in. Once you're done with that, make sure you clean the cover too. Now we're going to open it up. You're going to grab the motherboard. You're going to put it down like this all the way in. In 45 degrees, the I.O. side goes in nice and snugly. Once you put it down, make sure the screw hole matches. Put that tiny screw on the corner so hold it in place. Put the flex in the audio speaker cables. Open up the latch and put the flex cable underneath, inside. And close the latch. Make sure this cable goes in. Before you put it back on the board, in 45 degree angle, put this flex cable in and lock it down and put it in place like that. Grab the power jack, push it down in place. Run the cable all around wherever it's supposed to. Bring it in front of the connector and straight in, push in. And there we go. If you want to replace your CMOS battery, it's one right over here. And grab the top cover, bring it down straight, push the corner, pinch them together. You're going to hear those click sounds. That's fine. That's what you want to hear. Those are like a really nice click sounds. The back. Make sure those tiny clicks at the back, on the sides. All right. 
Uh, once you have it in there, now you want to put this, open up the latch for power on switch. And it goes in in 45 degree angle. Hold it and lock it down. Open up the lock, slide it in, lock it down. Put the four screws right at the bottom. You have to switch to your Phillips one. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helping you guys out. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking that like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. Appreciate it. All right, now that we got that one in place, we're going to grab the keyboard, put it in like this position, open up the latch. This one goes in in 45 degree angle, all the way inside the connector. Bring the front end of the keyboard under the palm rest, put the side, the back, push down the top row so it clicks in. You have those nice click sounds. Now we're going to close up and we're going to flip it upside down. First, we're going to run the black Wi Fi cable and then the white one right over. Okay, let's put the white cable first and then put the black cable right after under the grooves. This guy now, I'm going to do one by one. And then I'm going to hold it right at the top of the connector. I'm going to push it down. It did just snap on. Bring the black one here. Align it. Push it down and make a tiny soft click. Run it right there. Grab the DVD drive, slide it in place. First, let's put these two screws for the keyboard. These are tiny, long screws. The one right in here and the one in the middle. You want to put the hard drive, first put the back end of the caddy right underneath, slide it down, and then grab it and slide it towards the connector. Put that tiny screw right underneath at the back. All right now we're going to put one screw first on the bottom front end. Then we're going to grab the cover. We're going to put an offset position, slide it in, and you should hear one click sound in here. There we go. And put one tiny screw right on the service cover. And to finish it off is to put the rest of the screws all over the place. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm going to power on as soon as I finish putting up all these screws so you guys can see that it does power on with no problem. But I guess so many people are saying, oh, it's not going to turn on because you touched the motherboard and what not. So, all right, so let's go ahead and power it on. Obviously, I need a charger. Let me find it. And then I have uh, this HP charger. Let me see if this one works. Oh, it is on F2. Oh. Did I not press F2? F2, go to the setup. And there we have a Dell Inspiron 34, 37, and 4 gig, 8 gig, 6 gig RAM, iCode 5, 4, Gen 4. And that's it.